Hey, this is Brian Terry, and from the Disability Digest, you are about to listen to an excerpt of an interview with disability benefit expert Jim Brown. In this segment, he's going to share with you how to fill out the continuing disability review report forms. This is critical. Uh, even if you haven't received your review yet, it's good to be prepared in advance to understand what to do so that when you get them, you'll know how to execute this. So for the complete interview, if you're not a member, join us as a member. Make sure you let us know that you are approved for disability benefits, and we will put you in the queue to receive this entire interview. Be resources below this video to help you with the next steps. Thanks. Make it a great day. Very helpful. Now, what I'd like to do now is I'm going to share my screen, and uh, we can take the tip that you just um, talked about and and apply it to the forms. Now, uh, I have up here uh, two different types of forms. I'll start with the short form. So, so Jim, this is the form SSA 455, um, and uh, I refer to this as the short form. Um, and this can be done electronically when sent to people. First, though, before we go through the two forms, the short form and the long form, is do you have any idea, like, why some people are sent the short form and why some people are sent the long form? Because they have to send out a certain amount of each. Oh, back to the quota. Right. Okay. No, okay. Nothing, nothing specific. Okay. So on the short form here, um, very basic information. Uh, I don't believe there's anything to this. Well, maybe there is something to discuss there, but if there is, let me know. Well, um, you have a disabled adult child then. The pay's name and the beneficiary's name are different. So pay attention to who's being reviewed. Down here, we're talking about work. Yeah. Now, yep. if you've worked, be honest about it because they know. They have it there. One other warning. There is a maximum amount you can earn each year. Mm hmm Or each month. Mm-hmm. Don't earn that amount. Every month I get somebody who earns right up to the penny how much they're allowed to and then stops. And eventually they get terminated. And it's because Social Security will say to them, why are you earning that much? And they say, because I want to keep my disability. I wouldn't go over. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. You're basically saying I could earn more, but I won't. What you've done this again goes to the notebook I'm telling you to keep. If mm -hmm. you can write a description of how you feel when you get home. Right. I right. worked three hours. I went home. I had to sit for and let the pain go away. I was in agony. My back hurt. I couldn't walk for two hours. Be descriptive. Make them know that you couldn't work longer than you did. Okay. Um... In these sections here, are there any tips that you have? Uh, just be honest about it. Have you gone to school or gone to any training? Um, if your doctor says you can work or can't work, um, frankly, your doctor saying you can't work is sort of a useless statement because the doctor doesn't know what kind of work you can do. If you've had three back surgeries, you could still do Brian's or my job, but you couldn't work in a warehouse. Right. So the doctor doesn't usually take the time to find out what you're doing. Still check it. Um, okay. Most doctors don't discuss work with their patient, though. Have you gone to a doctor or clinic for treatment? I hope so. <clears throat> yeah. Make sure you're going. Yeah. And, and if somebody hasn't, they need to put no and they need to deal with the consequences because they'll find out, right? Right, because they're going to ask you. If you say yeah. yes, they're going to ask you what doctors, when, how often. Okay. Okay. 
Hospitalized surgery, I would say that's the same. Okay. Here's an interesting section. Do you have any advice for the remarks? Yes. One of the important things is list everything that's wrong with you that wasn't there when you had your, your benefits granted. I had a client who was using a cane when he received benefits. He had some severe orthopedic problems. Most of them had resolved, but he'd had a stroke and a heart attack since. Didn't list any of that. They had a video of him walking into the consultative exam during the review process without a cane. They cut him off. They said he was receiving his benefits fraudulently because his orthopedic problems had resolved. And he checked on the line above that his condition was worse. <laughs> but he didn't say he'd had the stroke and the heart attack. He actually got indicted for fraud. Oh, boy. So he came to me. I got him a criminal lawyer to defend him. Um, he didn't include under remarks that he'd had the heart attack and the stroke. So he, he went through hell. He, we got him his benefits. The jury was actually out 15 minutes to find him not guilty. But he okay. had to have his cardiologist and neurologist testify at a trial. And oh, boy. A criminal lawyer. So... If you have new conditions, it didn't ask for that on this form. Put it in right. under remarks. Okay. Good tip. I'm going to pivot over here to the long form. Um, and in the long form, are there areas where you have suggestions that would be different than what we just went through on the short form? We'll go down to 1G. Can you speak and understand English? I have seen the fraud investors, investigators come out to people after following them into a store saying, where's the milk? The claimant will point to the milk section and then show up at their house and say, you said you don't understand English and you answered my question. So you're getting this fraudulently. That's not fraud. And those cases are easy to win, but they put you through hell first. Um, so answer it honestly. The problem is, if you say no to this, how did you fill out this form? Okay. So when you say no, put the language you prefer, and then in a parenthesis, put who helped fill this out for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you say no and keep going without an explanation, somebody's going to think you're phony. Okay. Good point. As I go down through here, uh, perhaps there's other uh, okay. sections. Back, back to medical conditions. Okay. Again, list everything. And I mean everything. I, I had a client with autism, but I knew that that, they, I just had somebody with autism turned down. So I also put down his torn medial meniscus, his torn rotator cuff, and every other condition too, just to make sure that they understood that there was a lot more than this. The person from the state agency called and asked why I did that. My client was autistic. And I said, because you asked for all the med medical conditions, which gave them a laugh, but at least it was all filled out properly. Okay. Jim, back to the journal that we had talked about. What, what, what's the right area to tie it into um, when you, you had mentioned, if I recall, C journal? for certain situations. Um, if they, where they say the names and addresses of all your doctors. Okay. You may put the addresses in, or if they say, how often do you go to the doctor? All right. <clears throat> okay, so there was a section for that on the short form, and I expect there's one here as well. Also under remarks, you can put C-Journal. 
Okay. Good. All right. Next Medical. Year, in the last 12 months, have you seen a doctor for physical or mental condition? Yep. Um, and then they don't give you enough room if you're seeing several doctors. Yeah, imagine that. So that, again, you can put in uh, your primary doctor, the, the doctor that's treating you the most, but you can also put C-Journal. C-Journal. Okay. Uh, okay, then under, under meds, put the medicines. They only want the medicines you're taking right now. Don't go okay. through every medicine you've ever taken. Just put the ones you're taking now. Okay, good. Uh, if you don't know the reason for it, just put a question mark there. But you should ask the doctors why they're prescribing it if you don't know. That's always important. I have a comment here. Should it be the medications that they are prescribed or the medications they are taking? Because... You may have had conversations, as I have, with people that they might be prescribed 10, but only taken 8. I would put everything prescribed. Okay. One, one of the questions that comes up a lot in states where marijuana is legal and people have it prescribed. Yep. I only recommend putting it down for epilepsy. Okay. It, it's not well accepted for other conditions by Social Security yet. Mm -hmm. um, and some people think of it as still, why are you taking it? It's not approved federally. Mm -hmm. so I, don't, I don't recommend putting marijuana down yet. Um, okay. I don't think it will be accepted and be fine and all kinds of things. And the alcohol companies will be selling it, competing with the tobacco companies to see who can make more money on it. But right now, I don't recommend putting that down, even if it's prescribed by a physician. Okay. Okay. We're coming to the end here. Daily activities. Okay. That's an important one. And daily activities sometimes can make or break the case. What time do you get up in the morning? But I like to put what time you get out of bed after you get up. Sometimes you can get up at 7 a.m., but not get out of bed until 8.30 because you're so uncomfortable, it's hard to get going. Mm -hmm. What time do you take your meds? Do you have breakfast? Um, but be specific. They don't give you enough room to fill it out, so you may have to go to another page or the back of this page. Okay. But if you back in your house, you might put that you vacuum for 10 minutes and sit for an hour. If you make breakfast, don't just say, I make breakfast. Say, I make toast for breakfast. Otherwise, somebody who doesn't know anything is going to say, well, why can't you be a short order cook at a diner? Mm -hmm. So be specific. I made toast and coffee and then rested for an hour. Couldn't do the dishes too tired. Whatever it is, be specific. Be as okay. clear as you can. Okay. And if they make toast and coffee uh, and then they have to take a break, maybe they can do that some days, but they can't do it every day. Right. Exactly. But this is your chance to be verbose. Make it as clear as possible how difficult it is. When I teach lawyers how to represent people on disability claims, I tell them you're an artist and you're starting with a blank canvas and you're painting a picture of your client from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. And when you're all done, if you've painted a good picture, your client's going to get their benefits. This is your chance right here to paint a picture of what you do and how you suffer all day. If you have a great day every day and you get up and you go play golf or tennis or pickleball and you have no pain at all and you have no mental problems at all, then why are you getting disability? Mm -hmm. But that's not the case of probably anybody listening to this today. Paint that picture. Tell them how any activity you do causes problems. If it's a mental illness, 
and the mailman says, how are you? That might set you back for an hour because you had to talk to someone. Any problems you have on a regular basis, put in there. Let them know how difficult it is. If leaving the house is difficult for you, you can't work. One of the ways I win cases is by showing how hard it is for my clients to leave their house. If they can't leave, it can't work. If all they can do is go out of the house to go to the doctor or go to the drugstore, they can't go to a job. So prove that. Okay. Hobbies and interests is important too. That, that's an interesting angle uh, in all the time that I've been in and around this work, I haven't heard the prove that they are not able to leave the house angle theory. Um, okay, so this is. But go back to hobbies and interests a second. Okay, let's go back um, up. A so lot of people on hobbies and interests put down all the hobbies and interests they had before their disability. Okay. Um, put what you have now. Don't put what you used to do. I've okay. seen too many people denied or terminated because they'll put bowling and golf and all of the things they used to do Ew. that they're not doing now. Okay. So, all right. You might be interested in bowling and golf and then but put yes, but then say, but I can't do this now. Mm -hmm. I haven't played golf in three years. I haven't gone bowling in four years. Um, I watch it on TV some, you know, whatever. But only put what you're actually doing now. My only interest now is watching that. All right. Do it as complete as possible about what your hobbies and interests are now, which are probably very limited. <clears throat> and 9C is also important, so we can now go to that. Okay, I can see where it would be. But are you able to dress yourself? Um, even if you dress yourself, if it's difficult, okay. you can put yes, but put with difficulty. Okay. Same with bathing. I had a client who put yes, but I can't take baths anymore. Caring for your hair, if you have back or shoulder or arm problems. You take medicine. If you need a reminder to take your medicine, say so. Preparing meals. If it's only very simple meals, say so. Um, I had one person that they were terminating. He was a paraplegic, paralyzed from the waist up, but he said he fed himself. Um, we submitted or uh, his reconsideration, a little video of him feeding himself, and they reversed it immediately. Uh, he could move his fingers and his wrists a little bit and got it to some suction thing that then his was oh. attached to his mouth, and that's how he fed himself. But he was proud because he could do that, so he put yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So, Innocent. Don't be a hero. Make okay. yourself as pathetic as possible when you're filling this out. Okay. <laughs> All right. If uh, you're doing chores, again, if you're doing chores on this house, say yes, but put with a lot of rest if you have to rest each time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And okay. they're, they're asking for yes or no. You have to give the description. And this is where, on any of these, you might, if you've commented on it in the journal, say, see journal. Okay. Um, most people with a lot of pain, with a lot of, um, with any mental problems, have difficulty seeing, hearing, or speaking, concentrating, remembering, understanding, or following directions. If you're going to check yes, give a little explanation with it. Okay. If you're it, in pain all the time, you can't remember things well. It's a given. It, am I um, correct in understanding that the answer 
definitely wants to be truthful, but with clarity so that Social Security does not have or can develop the opinion that it can be done on a regular, consistent basis. Yes. Okay. You lift objects. Okay. You have to say yes to you can lift objects because you get dressed. Okay. If you say no, they're going to think you walk around nude or you're like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, contradicting. Yeah. Right. There goes your credibility. Right. But with difficulty. All right. You this is excellent. Be honest, but clarify it. All right. Yeah, this is your chance to make sure that they understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, and, he, and here we are down to a big block of remarks. Right. And under remarks, see my journal. Everything I do is difficult. Okay. Yes, see. Standing, standing, stooping, remembering, concentrating, whatever impairment got you disability All is right. what you put in there. Um, amongst the pathetic cases I had to represent somebody on was somebody on dialysis waiting for a kidney transplant. He'd had one and it was failing. And they turned him down because his and the chronologist wouldn't fill out a form Social Security sent him. They said your his family doctor should do it. And he had no family doctor. So they cut him off. He came to me. I sent him to a fam family doctor who I knew would fill a form out for me. And he lost on recon anyways because the person doing the recon just rubber stamped things. And his hearing took about five minutes. Um. If you're on dialysis, you're not supposed to lose your disability. That's an automatic. But somebody wasn't paying attention to the law and the rules and cut them off anyways. So you need to be descriptive. You need to be complete. When he got his next review three years later after he had gotten his kidney transplant, um, he was prepared and they didn't cut him off at all. So you need to be as thorough as possible. Take this form seriously. It's just a form, but it can make or break what their next step is. Okay. Let, let's talk about the next step.